Back to the economy and bring in White House Council of Economic Advisers. Uh, the chair thereof is Kevin Hassett. Uh, Kevin, welcome back. Good to see you again, sir. Oh, it's always good to be here. Professor Varney. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not an academic, you know that. Night. But I did stay last night on a Holiday Inn Express, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get the first reading of third quarter GDP, economic growth. We get the first reading tomorrow morning. Look like it's going to be in the 3% range. We've talked about this before, Kevin. I think that's disappointing. Tell me why it's not disappointing. No, remember in 2016, economic growth was at 1.6%, and everybody told us we're in this new normal where we're going to grow around 1% forever. And, you know, I haven't seen the numbers yet for tomorrow, so, we, you know, I can talk about it. Our internal modeling say that it's going to be about 3.5, but it could be north of 4. But 3.5, I think, is probably a good guess but, right but now, Kevin, we given the data in hand. But that's way, that's, you know, that's more than double uh, yeah. the growth rate that President Trump inherited. That's pretty but, good news, right? But, 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 we were told that when we get the tax cuts, and we got the tax cuts, we'd be looking at 4 and 5% growth. No, we were told that we would get 3% growth. If you look at our budget forecast that assumed the tax cuts last year, then we averaged like 3.1 or 3 over the next 10 years. And more importantly, we said that capital spending would boom by going up about 10% this year. Over the first half of the year, because of the tax cuts, capital spending went up about 10%. And, you know, we got the advanced herbals data, and it shows us that in the third quarter, it's going to be about 10% as well. So we've got a sustained capital spending boom. And that gives you sustained growth, Stuart, because what's going to happen now is all those new factories are going to start producing output in Q4 and Q1 of next year. Um, I want to talk to you about th this theory that's behind the scenes here, mm -hmm. that China is not buying our debt any longer, and that that is a form of retaliation for tariffs. Your mm -hmm. reaction to that? Well, I've, you know, of course, we hope that, you know, President Xi and President Trump meet at the G20 and we start to make a lot of progress in that relationship. But the U.S. debt market is this really, really big thing with lots of players. And there's been a little bit of academic work on whether block sales or, you know, block purchases have effects on prices, and it doesn't seem that they do. And, and so I think that, that somebody coming in and out of that market, it's such a liquid market, is it's pretty hard to make a difference by, oh. by you know, putting it in, in a ban on buys or something like that. So I don't think it's a thing that's a concern. Okay. Your department released a report on the rising cost sure. of socialism. You compared Bernie Sanders to Chairman Mao. You want to expand on that, sir? Oh, well, I'm not sure. You know, you know so basically uh, we had a bunch of economists come in because people take a year's leave, and they said that one of the problems they saw in the classroom is that there are all these people calling themselves socialists that don't really understand what socialism is. And so what we did is we wrote, wrote a report about socialism and its effects on the economy and compared ourselves to Nordic countries and so on, and, and we found basically that there's not a very positive history of socialism. If we were to adopt the typical policies of the 1970s Nordic countries, for example, we estimate that GDP would drop by about 20 percent. And so I think that the bottom line is that uh, people who have objectives of, say, having a more fair society should probably find a different name because the history of socialism is so bad. And, and we have 70 pages of that for the, for the viewers who want to get into that you and know, dig into I, it. I could have written a couple of pages for you because I think of myself <laughs> as a refugee from socialism. You know? Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> Bring me on board next time. I don't mind working yeah. for the government every now and again. <laughs> yeah, you know, there, but there are lots of interesting facts, like, like if you take a Scandinavian person and move them to U.S., then their income goes up by about 50 percent, you know, compared to the average uh, income in Scandinavia. And so we have all these people saying, hey, we should copy the policies of Scandinavia. And, you know, what we do at CEA is we try to expose hypotheses like that uh, to the data. But again, like nowhere in the paper anywhere is there the word Democrat. It's not a partisan piece. It's a piece about the history of socialism. Well, I would be very partisan if I were to take part in a study like that. But that's not the story. <laughs> Kevin Hassett, it's always a pleasure. And thanks for thanks joining us. Thanks for having us, me sir. back. Yes, sir. Appreciate it.